Hey guys, so welcome back. Welcome back to my studio. Uh, this is my office. This is where I teach golf, um, where I take care of my golf brand. And before we get into the driver, the drivers, the testing of all that, I want to talk to you about talk to you about cleaning your golf clubs. Okay. Now these golf clubs, I, I put it in you know a bucket of water, hot water. And why I'm why I'm even talking about this is because I see a lot of people that have pretty grooves. I do the same, I'm guilty of it. Um, when you have dirty grooves and you play out there and you catch a fire lie, or sometimes even just in a fairway lie, the ball can go further, okay? There's gonna be no spin because of the dirt, you know, grass that's in between the grooves. Now, when you don't have those grooves fresh and clean, you could possibly get a flyer. You could possibly get a shot that goes further than you usually hit it, right? And so that's why I'm, I'm showing that it's so important to clean your golf clubs. Make sure you guys clean your golf clubs, especially your wedges. You know, when you're around the greens, you want to get that proper spin. If your grooves are dirty like this, it's not going to spin. Um, yeah, so you might you you might get like, oh, I'm, I'm hitting it further. Oh my God. Uh, I have to hit, I'm hitting nine iron, 155, 160. Um, and then you go to another hole and you hit it like 140 and you're wondering, oh my God, what happened? See, all, you see how our mind can go down that rabbit hole? So make sure you clean your clubs. Make sure those grooves are clean, okay? <laughs> yep, so dirty grooves like this, you're not gonna get <laughs> spin. And you know, sometimes I wonder, even my own game, like, oh, why am I not spinning it as much? I'll check my grooves and sure enough, they're dirty and the ball's not grabbing those grooves and you're not gonna get that spin. So make sure you guys clean those grooves, okay? Now that we got the clean the clubs out of the way, I wanna talk a little bit about my playing background. I've been getting asked a lot on Instagram, uh, Sammy Golf on my Instagram, uh, and on YouTube, I'll get messages asking, you know, why am I not competing? Uh, or, you know, did I compete? And I did compete in Asia. I did win a Q school. It was called One Asia Q school in 2014. And it was co-sanctioned with Europe, Japan, China, Korea, Australia. And I have an interesting story. You know, I, I played pretty well leading up to it. I won the Q school. And then when I got out there, I just, Played terrible. Played really bad. Um, you know, I was a rookie, obviously, and it was a very tough time for me to handle. Um, there's a lot of things that goes into these tournaments, these big events that I wasn't prepared for. You know, it's it's a lot bigger. It's a lot deeper than just playing golf. It's actually, you know, pre preparing for pro ams, right? Preparing for travel, preparing your body. You know, just being tired from tra the travel uh, and you know I was 22 you know I was pretty young you know and I'm so grateful for the experiences um, it was not fun because I was playing so bad but when I look back it really shaped me as a person um, and I will never take I would never wish to not have those experiences I, I I'm very grateful for that um, actually I want to show you guys something hey California people um, the Q school is actually held in Industry Hills, believe it or not. Um, and yeah, I played pretty well there. Uh, it was a four round Q school, uh, a lot of good names. Now, if you probably look up the names are, you know, PGA Tour players, European Tour players on there. Um, but yeah, I played pretty well. Um, it was a very humbling moment for me. But um, yeah, just to give you guys a little bit of context, I did play out there, played some pretty big events and played pretty bad, but it was a great experience. Um, and also, I've won a, you know, a few a mini tour events. I've also won a Korean event. Um, so yeah, my background stems from playing in Asia, playing local in, in the uh, Los Angeles, in the United States. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't really, I don't compete anymore. Um, I enjoy doing this YouTube stuff, uh, giving tips where I can. But yeah, that's pretty much my background uh, behind my playing.
three drivers I'll be testing today. It's a TSI 3. Okay. We got the Maverick Callaway. Okay. And we got the PXG. Now I'm gonna test these three drivers and you know, hopefully I can help you guys out with, uh, you know, maybe your future buy, I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. I'm gonna start off with the Maverick. All right, Galloway. I, I wanna hit three shots that are good, that I feel like were good contact and average them out between the three drivers and we'll go from there. So. Okay. That was okay. Okay. Um, so we really, we really want to look at the carry distance of the roll. So the carry distance was 265. The first one, first thing in the day. I don't know. I don't know if I like that. Uh, A little better, a little bit better. Um, yeah, total distance 295, 293. Um, I know, although we are looking at distance, you know, first was 265 carry, 293 total. What's really important is the spin rate. You know, I typically want anywhere from 2000 to 2300 with the driver with a decent launch angle of above 11. If your spin rate's too low, you know, the ball can not stay in the air, if you're, especially if you're not launching it. So that's one thing that you definitely need to look for when you're looking at a driver. Okay. Yeah, that was a little better. All right, so it seems like this Callaway driver, I'm hitting it about. 265 to 270 carry. So let's move on to another driver. Uh, move on to another driver. So let's go. On, let's go into with the PXG now. about the same I guess but the spin rate's still low. Okay. That one was hit pretty good. It looks like it's dying too. It doesn't look like it's staying in the air. 1590 RPM spin is a no-no. You don't want to be in that on those numbers. That was bad. <laughs> so. Alright, that one was hit pretty good. Straight. Man, it's looking like it's dying. I think this one might not be the best one. Um, yeah. Not enough spin. Alright, so. It's looking like PXG average is about 1600 RPM for me. Calling was around 1800. Not very good. Um, we'll get to the tie list now. Hopefully this one is pretty good. That one was okay. I mean, already alone that that carry was pretty much longer. Okay, so there you go. I mean, already. Five yards longer, 270 carry, um, 2,000 RPM. So that shows you how much the spin rate matters. I mean, too much spin is not good. Too low of spin is not good. We're gonna have that happy medium with a nice little launch angle. Um, let's hit a couple more. A little bit thin, but I mean, yeah, again, 2,000 RPM. It's looking like this head is probably the best. Okay, 
again. 2100 RPM, 270 carry. Um, it's looking like this driver's the best, and I really love this shaft, the Tour AD shaft. Um, so if you guys are in the market for getting a driver, I mean, I would, so far it looks like the Tyler's one's the best one, so. Hopefully that helped. Um, the uh, Tyler's driver uh, was about seven, six, seven yards longer. Swinging the same. Uh, the spin rate was better, so yeah. TSI 3, the winner today. So thank you for joining me today, guys, uh, at my indoor facility. Uh, hopefully, the driver talk helped you guys, uh, maybe possibly for your next purchase, for what brand to get. Um, and remember, higher launch means you could have a lower spin, or a lower launch, you kind of want to have a higher spin, okay? So make sure you keep those things in account before you make that driver choice. And also, if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure to subscribe for future golf videos, course vlogs. I'm gonna start bringing some special guests onto the channel. Hopefully we get some insight on their fields and you know, enjoy having a good time on the golf course. And also please throw a like if you found this video helpful. Thank you so much.